welcome back and thank you for staying with us. We now want to start our conversation uh, straight away talking about the status of medical training in the country and to have this conversation with me is Professor Michael Kipto, the Chief Executive Officer, Kenya Medical Training College. Thank you for creating time for us tonight. Um, just let's, let's start here. Earlier this, this month you were in Chemolingo to Tiati constituency in Baringo um, to sort of set up or launch um, the Kenya Medical Training College in that particular constituency. I find that interesting because that that is like a very marginalized area that has been mad with a lot of challenges such as insecurity and all probably uh, to begin this conversation what do you think is the value add for the community to have such an institution set up within their boundaries thank you very much uh, what is very important is that we want to ensure that we can actually take the training to the lowest level the advantage for the community is that uh, they will be able to utilize that facility, um, get the students within that area who could not probably get an opportunity to, to do medical training now that it is closer to them. They can actually be day scholars and they can still get the training that th th they need. Um, the other thing we have also made sure is to ensure that um, as we set up such a, a facility, we make sure that we have all the necessary equipment um, human resource capital is required mm -hmm. to be able to ensure that the people we produce have the skills and competencies that will serve uh, humankind, especially now that we are talking about medical training. Mm -hmm. All right. KMTC actually produces um, a large percentage of the workforce we have in our healthcare uh, sector. I just want us to look at the journey. Uh, is it 1927 when it was founded? How have, how have you seen this transition? What would you say has been the biggest milestone in terms of the kind of training we give uh, the future workforce in, in, in the medical sector? What is it that you feel uh, is actually a step in the right direction, something we are getting as we transition from, I believe things have changed from 1927 what is that one thing that you can say is your biggest milestone the biggest milestone is uh, we only started in 1927 and we are only in Nairobi uh, the biggest milestone is that now we are in 44 counties which we have brought uh, medical training closer to the people uh, we have also taken advantage of uh, technology and for me what I've seen really working for us is when COVID came in it was a blessing in this case because yes we are losing people but at the same time it made, sh it made us to use technology more uh, so that we use now e-learning platform we have networked all the 71 campuses across the country uh, seamless in terms of uh, teaching also in terms of day-to-day -day running of that uh, the, the campuses which are spread across we are able to monitor from the headquarters and know exactly what is happening across the 71 mm -hmm. campuses. Mm -hmm. By a click of a button, we'll be able to know the finances in which campus, mm -hmm. uh, who has taught today, who has not taught, because we do a lot of monitoring. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the milestone. Mm -hmm. uh, that so the colleges are kind of connected uh, and co connected, networked. Yes, and networked. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. In terms of the content, though, also looking at the demands in the um, world of medicine, right now we are having emerging diseases. We are having an increasing demand for telemedicine. You know, COVID has taught us quite a number of lessons. Are we also changing the curriculum? Are we also aligning it to the, 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 the dynamism in the medical world? Uh, in terms of uh, curriculum, each curriculum is reviewed every five years. Thus, you cannot go beyond five years before you review. And that ensures that we put in new technology that has come in, new information that has come in. Like now, COVID is already part of our, our curriculums. We have already incorporated that so that each student will be able to go through uh, basics on how to ensure prevention and safety. Mm -hmm. um, what we have also done is that we have 18 programs with over 71 courses so that it allows us to specialize in specific areas. We have radiology, which is important. We have um, optometry, which is basically looking at the eye. Uh, we have nursing. We have clinical medicine, we have medical engineering, just to mention a few. Mm -hmm. And all these programs are reviewed every 
five years or, or even earlier depending on need mm -hmm. but, but, but you see uh, even during this time of covid there has been that constant cry of you know where are our innovators where are our researchers while the whole world is focused around researching and learning about this new pandemic sort of you know as a country we feel like we have not done justice uh, in terms of research in terms of innovation you worked at, at, at Cambridge for some time do you think there is a gap perhaps in in terms of our level of investment in research and innovation as this world keeps changing um, I can say that we are the right uh, journey in that if you look the way COVID was handled and even as a country uh, the first sequence thing was done in uh, Kilifi Cambridge Trust and that clearly tells you we are up to the game as researchers in this country uh, the only challenge that is there in research is that the, the government needs to s spend more or allocate more resources through the national treasury so that we can have the latest mm -hmm. uh, equipments to be able to do research do productions but I, I can assure you that that work is going on currently in Cambridge mm -hmm. uh, as an institution we are also doing research as, as Kenya Medical Training College and that gives us an opportunity to carry out operational research. The basic sciences, we leave it for Cambridge because they have the personnel and they have the kind of equipment. Because basically for us is to train so that we can over service delivery. So we, we are yet to go into deep research, but mm -hmm. we are doing currently what I, I refer as operational research mm -hmm. that is currently going on by our students and also staff. Because for the students to graduate, they must undertake a project. All right. I don't know why I feel like time is slipping <laughs> through my hands. There's so much to cover. But generally, just asking you as we just about to, to, to wind up this conversation, if you look at the health sector, what do you think are some of the issues, the challenges that are there? And as somebody in charge of a, an institution training the future workforce in this sector, what are you already doing as a proactive approach to deal with some of these issues? Um, the biggest ch challenge will be uh, the issue of the health facilities where we need to train uh, the students because they need to do practicums and practicums can only be done in the health facilities so there are limitations if we want to train uh, specialists in nephrology we are limited by the health facilities that actually have theaters and have the right equipment for us to to use for training what we have done as a college is to do what we refer simulation we have laboratories mm -hmm. which is as similar to what is happening in, in the in hospital the world, because yeah. in the real world you don't want to start touching a patient a human being before going through the rigorous training which we do in our skills laboratories where we take our students through the theory and the practicals and we do simulation and uh, we'll be opening a facility next week here in Nairobi uh, Nairobi campus where it is fully uh, loaded uh, simulation laboratory where you have a complete uh, theater you have all the equipments required for ne nephrology and that will be linked to all our campus at the same time mm -hmm. so that people can follow the teaching online from that laboratory mm -hmm. which is specialized mm -hmm. because if you are to do an actual operation you can do it from there Mm -hmm. So those are the new things that we're bringing on board. And also the networking ensures that we train people now that technology has changed. People are moving to telemedicine. You don't need to physically be there. The doctor mm -hmm. can be yeah, coordinated. Mm -hmm. And um, that will also reduce the, the, the demand for the human capital. Because if, if you have an X-ray machine in Mandera and we don't have a, a specialist there, the specialist can be in, uh, here in Nairobi and will be able to read the results that have been taken from Mandela. All right, thank you. Just a question from our viewer David Kiaria from Madare. He was asking, how are you ensuring that your training is skill-oriented? And of course, also one from Morris. Morris asks, um, you know, how can we stop exporting our healthcare workers? I believe exporting by the fact that after you've trained them, they get to look for greener pastures abroad. Just briefly answer those two questions as we wind up. Uh, as I said earlier, that our training is hands-on. And basically that's how now we bring in the skills that are required. And uh, being in a medical uh, training, you must ensure that the practicals, so we put more emphasis on practicals than the theory. 
uh, the issue of uh, us losing uh, human capital is because we don't have enough opportunities. Uh, we still need uh, health workers mm -hmm. in our facilities. Uh, but the challenge is that resources are not enough to employ all of them. Mm -hmm. And even when they go out, um, it is important that, because they are plowing back to the country mm -hmm. again, so we are not losing anything. And um, the human resource in the future will have to export. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. I, I wish you could have more time for this conversation. It's very important. I believe we should be picking up this conversation in the near future, just digging deeper into this. Professor Michael Kipto, the Chief Executive Officer, uh, Kenya Medical Training College. You are talking about the status of medical training in the country. The show continues. We'll be coming back with more. There's still, uh, you know, sports and business lined up ahead for you. Do stay with us.